Well, we can get an Ireland perspective on the game now. Former Ireland and British and Irish Lions back row, Stephen Ferris is on the line. How are you, mate? Not too bad, thank you. Not too bad at all. A um, bit deflated, actually, after Saturday's performance. But, um, yeah, I suppose the main positive is that we can't get any worse. Are you deflated and a little bit lighter because you were sweating like hell on the side of the pitch? And his three-piece. And your three-piece. <laughs> you look sharp, yeah, though. You did, you did so look sharp. It was so warm. Like, it was so warm. I went out, uh, I made a man uh, who owns a brand called Herbie Frog. He says, Stevie, call Diana, get getting sorted out, a couple of pieces. I said, Grand. So I went down and he says, oh, mate, see these chinos? Like, you will not sweat in these chinos. They're so good. <laughs> well, mate, I was sweating bucketfuls on Saturday. Like, those chinos didn't work. Well, mate, you did look sharp and you've given me a conscience now since um, we did uh, the final up in Glasgow and I looked like a tramp compared to you good south. Um, but what I was going to say, um, are you allowed to say this, not to get too political, but do you see yourself as slightly more English now than you were at the weekend and less Irish? I mean, that was... Who get, Stevie, who gets 60 points put on them in this day and age? Who? Tell me. I mean, it's 57, like, relax. Mate, they, still, they couldn't go out. So anything over 50 is like the, the world's ending. Jim, are you are you are you alive? I, I thought you texted me like last week saying you were going for emergency surgery. I told you, oh, you bollocks, didn't I? I told you, I know, it was bollocks. just looking for sympathy, mate. I'm seeing you tomorrow. I'm seeing you tomorrow when this is released. So we're doing oh, we're doing right. a World Cup memories with, with Stevie Ferris. If anyone wants to check that out, thanks for plugging that. But yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. I'm, I'm all good, thanks, mate. Good, good, good. No, you're talking about sixty points. It could have been a hell of a lot more. Um, I think you know Youngs didn't have his best game. I think. England could have been a lot more clinical at times in the first half and just like Ireland were oh man they were just all over the place it really was hard to watch like um, and everybody was just looking around for answers and nobody really had them so I mean, a tough day really tough day um, and obviously it's went down in the history books is the biggest ever record defeat to England so um, not good and mate, just looking at the game. I mean, I'm watching it from in, in the stands and all this stuff. You're you're doing a load of pitch side analysis with uh, the boys and girls from Sky. But I'm looking at their defensive structure, and it looked like they've done no practice. They're just doing what they want. Stockdale's flying four in from the edge. You've got Bundyaki flying up in an arrowhead formation on his own. What was going on? Defense is your was your game when you played smashing people. But what yeah. what happened? Well, first of all, if you're going to make a ta- you're going to attempt to make a tackle, you got to make it. It's as simple as that, like, you know, and we, what was it, 65 or 67% tackle success? Like, if it's below 90, it's a pretty bad day at the office. So, you know, you got to stop these guys, these big, strong, physical English lads, stop them dead in their tracks, and they didn't do that. Once they got a bit of momentum, then it was just easy. But you kind of, you said about Stockdale and you said about Bundy there, you know, in years gone by, if, you know, Tommy had to hit in on the edge and, you know, he thought he was hung out to dry by the lads inside him. There would have been a massive debate behind the post. There would have been arguments. You know, Tommy would have been, you know, um, saying, lads, what the hell's going on here? You made a mistake here. You made a mistake there. Everybody just seemed to be looking around. And you said, you know, about everybody was doing different things. It's just total confusion. Like, everybody's just going, right, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Stockdale's hitting in. Bundy's gone up and out. It's just like, just not reading off the same page so what are they practicing well they're practicing against each other and training they're not coming under the same amount of pressure that they were under on Saturday against England um, and yeah they were just uh, they were just all over the place and when they seemed to make one mistake or two mistakes they made three and four and you just can't compound one error with another so Stevie where do you think they are then mate because you know the Six Nations before last they looked unbeatable Leinster obviously doing so well in the, in the Champions Cup as well, but I mean, you talk about them things now. We're talking about one of the best teams in the world, supposedly, over the last couple of years, and you're mentioning them problems. Is there anything going on in house that us and the million listeners well, could, should listen to? Yeah, <laughs> good question. I have no idea. I don't really speak to too many of the lads um, that are currently involved in the camp and um, the squad. I was sent a text message earlier on from a mate of mine down in Dublin, and, it, and it, all it said was, Are we in trouble? Question mark. And like, I think every fan that's watching this Ireland team at the minute believes that Ireland are in trouble. You know, I've been there. Uh, we lost four out of four before the World Cup in 2011. Now we didn't have any record defeats, but at the same time, you know, it's it's just all about winning those those games during the World Cup. And if Ireland get to a semi final and play some particularly good rugby, you know, that record defeat against England will be quickly forgotten about. Uh, so. 
Yeah, it's a good question, Tim. Is there anything going on in-house? Maybe. I, I'm not sure. I'm not going to start any rumours, but the lads certainly didn't look like they were enjoying themselves at the weekend. And uh, is it something to do with the train? I was out in Portugal and a few of the lads were there. It was absolutely ridiculously hot, so maybe the knock-on effect of that. Joe Schmidt talks about heavy legs. But also, since Joe Schmidt announced he was leaving the job after the World Cup, it's, it has been sort of downhill, hasn't it? The, the performances have gone and have they peaked too early? Well, Goody, is it is it a regret regression? Is it, are they sort of slightly going backwards, and everybody else is getting better, or are they just staying exactly where they are, and everybody's getting everybody else is getting better? Like standing on on the touchline on Saturday, like I was just looking at Billy Vinopolo going, "Thank the Lord Jesus, I am not playing here today." <laughs> like he is massive, so big, so strong. Like Underhill, who's probably the smallest guy, or Curry, the smallest guy in that pack. They, the muscles were bulging out it every orifice in their body like they were just absolutely shredded and I'm just going flipping heck and then I walk past the likes of Ian Henderson on the other side of the pitch and he's probably the biggest lad in, in, in the Irish team and I was just you know he's a big lump of a fella but nothing on the, on the English boys I just think they're they're a big physical powerful outfit and if Ireland get matched with the physicality stakes and they always seem to find themselves in a bit of bother so yeah it's tough man who are the guys, Stevie, that are going to step up? Like I thought the same watching it, and we were talking about, um, you know, the riches that England have in terms of ball carriers and power. Who have Ireland got now um, that you can see, like, right, th- this is who we're going to latch on to. You mentioned Henderson there. You know, he did well, ripped the ball out of the mall and stuff like that. And when he's fit, he, he's a world-class operator. But who else is there? Bundiaki, obviously, can carry. He scored a good try. But who else in that yeah. squad can step up and be like, right, here we go, follow me? <laughs> Um, pass. Next question. <laughs> Honestly, it's it's at a stage now where I was on the plane on the way home. I was going right. If I to make it into a World Cup quarter final, and you know who would I play in the back row? You've got Peter Omani, you've got Van der Fleer. Okay, they don't really carry that much ball. They're not particularly good carriers. They're good over the ball. And they're good in the line out, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But they're not going to give you that go forward. Like Ireland's go forward man are their two props: Furlong and Healy, and Henderson if he's playing. That, that, and James Ryan carries a lot of ball like he carries a lot of ball but too much ball he shouldn't be carrying that amount so then I was thinking to myself I was like geez, could you play Byrne at 6 could you play Omani at 7 and, and Jack Conan at 8 would that give you more of a versatility in the back row you look at combinations England's pack and the combinations they had all over the pitch it seemed to work Ireland just didn't work you know so maybe that's something to look at something to experiment with experiment with over the next couple of weeks it's something that Joe Smith has been kind of not been called out for at the minute but he's he stuck to what he's known over the last number of years the likes of Rory Best the likes of you know Peter Amani and uh, Devin Toner at times and just going with the same old names maybe it is time that he does mix it up and, and go with different combinations just to see how it works because if they keep going the way they're going lads you know, it could be another tough day at the office this week. Confidence is already very low. Um, and the last thing you need is to be rock bottom when um, you're just about to jump on a plane to head to the other side of the world. And then, obviously, looking at this game in Cardiff this week, how big's that uh, in terms of getting back on the horse? And you know, do you think he's going to make wholesale changes? Well, he said in his press conference today, it, and it's funny, usually Joe would send out the likes of um, you know the scrum coach, Greg Fake or Andy Farrell will come out and do the, the midweek press conference, but he's actually come out today to face the media. Uh, very interesting. He said he's going to make a few changes. There will be changes. Uh, Johnny Sexton is going to get game time, whether it be this week or next week, uh, against Wheels. So we will see him. Um, Kane Healy's definitely not going to play, so Lucia Prop is going to have a change for sure. So, yeah, there are going to be changes. I would like to see Tagburn get a, get a run. Um, I think he's a world-class operator. We, we all know how good he was for Scarlet over those couple of years. and He just seems doesn't seem to be the player that Joe Smith really likes. Um, and, yeah, I, I would mix it up, guys. Somebody like Rory Best, you know, he's, he's kind of... He would like to go out and prove himself. So he's the type of character that would go, right, I didn't have a great game. Things didn't go our way. You know, I led our country to the biggest record defeat against England. I want to try and put this right. So somebody like Rory might, might step up to the plate again and there might be guys like Peter Amani and CJ Stander that might 
knock on Joe's door during the week to say, look, that was unacceptable at the weekend. Let me try and redeem myself to a certain extent. And you spoke about changes there, and you might be quite close to the horse. No, is he going to change? <laughs> is he going to change that perm before the weekend or not? Because that is absolutely horrendous. Here. I mean, if you're in the seventies, you might have got away with it. But what is that? What's he doing? What's he thinking? No. Say that again. Sorry, I missed the question. Oh, sorry. I'll start again. Talking of changes. <laughs> sorry, say that again. Yeah, I'll start again so we can get it. So, talking of changes in the team. Is your mate yeah. Stockdale the oh, nay the horse going to change that horrendous perm that he's got? Oh my god, mate! I actually commented on um, I think it was Ulster Rugby or Irish Rugby put up a post and they put a picture up of him and I said, for God's sake, the amount of win bonuses and match fees that guy's had, he can't even afford a haircut. <laughs> and he would come back to me. He came back to me and he says, oh, "You're one to talk about hair." I was like, "You." bastard and I was like he's got me there like <laughs> jealousy mate you're just jealous mate I'm seeing you you're starting to look like a, um, a one month old baby a one month old Andy Good. Uh, whoa 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 Wait, there's no such thing as a fat Andy Good anymore I'll have you, I'll have you know that my friend you've been working hard dude you've uh, been following your social media trips you've been uh, in the gym quite a bit recently oh no no, oh, no, that, no that, thank you mate, thank you thank that's you an archive much. of footage that is just that leave it there he's been in once mate and he's taken about six or seven different videos in different parts of the gym <laughs> and then keeps them in his phone <laughs> and posts them smart <laughs> Wise. Stephen, thank you very much for joining us, mate.